Welcome to another video and today we're taking a look at a Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon Gen 3 for use in 2025. So I do like this laptop but there are some clear limitations to using it. So I do like this laptop but there are some clear limitations. We'll go over the good, the bad, and run through my usual video encoding, video rendering, and gaming tests. I'll also show you how to access the motherboard and some of the upgradable features and some of the features that are not upgradable. So there's some things I really like about this laptop, but there's also some things that are indicative of how ThinkPads have come to be prior to the release of like the T480 or T480S. Anyway, that's just meant to preface the video. Let's go take a look at it. I'll just pause here for a moment and list the specs for this particular model. The first thing I really like about this laptop is the display panel. And the one I have is a 14 inch 1920 by 1080 Full HD IPS with 300 nits. And I have the room darkened a little bit just to show off how bright this panel is. And checking out the panel on an angle, we can see that the display isn't washed out. It's actually pretty crisp. So whether you're looking at the panel way down like this or like this or whatever, you're going to have a pretty clear field of vision. Some of the other usual ThinkPad nice-to-haves are the backlit keyboard and the intuitive keyboard that I really like typing on. The touchpad is actually pretty nice and the size suits me just fine. Of course, using the red touchpoint is intuitive as always, as long as you're used to it. Another area this laptop shines is the case material. It reminds me a lot of the T470S and the T480S. According to the product specifications, it is carbon fiber reinforced plastic and super magnesium. I have a T490 right here for reference. And the case material is much different, especially to the touch. I also found that this is less susceptible to fingerprints. My hands aren't overly oily, but they can get a little sweaty at times, just being honest. And I found the same thing with my T480S. The palm rest I also found to be less susceptible to unsightly fingerprints and a little bit easier to clean. And I can't state enough just how much I like how it feels as compared to the other case material on the T490. And I guess since I have the T490 out, we'll compare the size. It's not like the T490 is bulky. We can see with my tape measure here, it sits right at three quarters of an inch, while the X1 Carbon is at five eighths. So of course that's not a huge difference, but when you're packing for traveling and stuff like that, having even that tiny little bit of extra space in a small backpack actually would kind of make a difference. And I happen to have a scale right here, so let's see how much either one weighs. The X1 Carbon, 2.6 pounds and the T490, 3.2 pounds. For me, that difference in weight is not a deal breaker, but for somebody else traveling a lot and needing something light, maybe it is. Let's go over the IO. Here we have a USB 3.0 always on, mini display port, and at first glance, I thought that was an SD card reader, but that is the One Link Plus connector, something that I've never used, but I think it's proprietary to ThinkPad. And it's a type of adapter that provides like a extra networking port and some other display ports. If you're using one, definitely let me know what you used it for because I would be curious to try it out. And over here is the power input with the LED indicator beside it. And on to the right side, here's the Kensington lock, HDMI port, USB 3.0, another USB 3.0, and a microphone and headphone combo jack. On the rear of the laptop, there's a little grill for air exhaust from the CPU fan. And there's a little tab here that you can pull out just using your fingernail, which reveals the micro SD card reader and the SIM card slot. Honestly, a full size SD card reader would be much better for my purposes, but we live in a world of adapters, so that's all right. I guess falling under the category of IO is the fingerprint reader. I always forget to cover this because I've never actually used it. So now let's take a look inside. First thing we should do is disable the built-in battery. So let's power on and start hitting enter to get to the to get to the BIOS screen. Okay, if your laptop boots to Windows instead of allowing you to view the menu, I'll show you a quick way to adjust that. Once you're in once you're in Windows, hit the Windows key and type control panel. Enter that. Here you can navigate to hardware and sound. Under power options, change what the power buttons do. Change settings that are currently unavailable. Uncheck the turn on fast startup. Save changes. Now we'll shut down again. Hit the power button again and start hitting enter. 
Once you're greeted with this screen, press F1 to enter BIOS. Once in BIOS, you can navigate over to the Config tab, down to Power, and down to Disable Built-in Battery, and Yes. So this just makes sure that when you're opening it up and doing servicing or upgrades, stuff like that, you're not going to have the laptop on or less chances of shorting something out. So let's flip this thing over and take a look inside. And you'll need a Phillips head screwdriver. And having something like a plastic guitar pick to score along the bottom panel and release some plastic clips will ensure that you don't damage the case material. That battery is just about the same size as the motherboard. And from my tests, it's actually operating pretty well and giving me a really good charge. As you can see, it's 52 watt hours, probably another selling feature of the Carbon series. And you can just see the NVMe SSD peeking out underneath this little piece of black material. So that's definitely one thing you can upgrade. And we actually do have an M.2 Wi-Fi card installed. So that's another thing you can upgrade. And that's about it for upgrades. You can see here just above the CPU heatsink, we have the eight gigabytes of soldered RAM. Now the close proximity of the RAM to the CPU most likely provides some pretty good speeds. And it would be pretty decent if this was 16 gigabytes of soldered RAM, but because we're limited to eight and no available DIMM slot for upgrades, well, it is what it is. Speaking of the CPU, if you wanted to add some new thermal paste, you just would simply have to use that Phillips head screwdriver, remove the heat sink, and then lift up the CPU fan over here, and then you're good to go. I've already done this and I've cleaned the fan as well, so I'm not going to demonstrate this on video. There's not too much more to see. There's a lot of ribbon cable connections in case you need to replace things like the power button, the fingerprint reader, speaker cable, and the keyboard assembly. I know this one is for the touchpad, and the keyboard and the track point. This middle one, I'm not too sure of if somebody in the comments can point that out, that'd be great. And lastly, we have the WWAN port, which I suppose is upgradable. It doesn't list this in the product specifications, but I do have a spare M.2 SSD. Let's plug this in and see if it's recognized by the system. So it looks like the SSD is getting power, but we can see here in the boot list, it does not show up. And further here in Windows, we can see in Disk Partition that it also does not show up. So sadly, that is just a WWAN port if you need to use it. Now let's check out the video rendering and video encoding tests. And so we have my usual 11 minutes of raw 1080p footage to render with the following settings. Let's see how long this one takes. 19 minutes and 19 seconds. So if you're very casual with your video rendering, I suppose that's not too bad. You can just set it and walk away. I didn't really expect too much more from a two core four thread mobile CPU. And for reference, that is the longest so far out of three laptops being tested with the T490S four core eight thread CPU option being four minutes and 37 seconds faster. Now we're ready to test out video encoding with Handbrake, and that's my usual 11 minutes of 1080p gaming footage at the Creator 1080p preset. And of course, just testing out raw CPU power. Let's see how long this one takes in comparison to the render. 17 minutes and two seconds. Again, if you are in the situation where you can just set it to run and walk away, I suppose that's not too bad, but now we know how long it takes with that CPU. Just for context, compared to the T490S with the quad-core CPU, five minutes and two seconds longer. And now onto some gaming tests. And to record the gameplay footage, I have an HDMI cable attached from the X1 Carbon over to my workstation PC, where I'm capturing the footage with an Elgato 4K capture card. I've got all these free games from the Epic Games Store that I've collected over the years, so I thought I'd try a couple out. We're going to test out something that will stress the system a little bit, like LEGO Star Wars. Something a little bit easier, like this game called River Bond that looks kind of fun. And then something that we can definitely play with ease, this game called Love. Let's see how well they perform.
So that about does it for my coverage of the X1 Carbon Gen 4. There's lots of good things I like about this laptop and some things I don't like. As it turns out, 8GB of RAM isn't really too bad as long as you are sticking to more like general tasks. As you can see, something like Microsoft Office works very well. And as long as you have a solid internet connection, I don't think that browsing the net will be a really big deal. As you can see, it's loading up pretty fast for me and everything's scrolling really well. Images are loading pretty fast. And for those of you who think that 16 gigabytes is needed just for browsing Chrome with a lot of tabs open, well, uh, unless you have like 2000 tabs open or I don't know, 20 videos running at once, you'll probably experience some lag. But generally, if you keep it lean and mean, of course, I'm kind of generalizing here. So take that for what it is individual use case will differ across the board. I know I could probably use it for a daily driver for what I do at my day job. So thanks a lot for watching and let me know if you're using one of these in 2025. Have a great day.